All right, showing a bit of a different format for this one. So the resources used to create this essay were Andre Kapathy's Intro to Large Language Models. It's a YouTube video. Three Blue, One Brown, uh, What is a GPT? Visual in Intro to Transformers. And DeepMind's podcast series with Hannah Fry. David Silver doesn't make much noise. He's not on Twitter. He really does podcasts and he never seems to engage in the heated debates around the more controversial aspects of artificial intelligence. Yet he's made some of the most significant contributions to the field. A lifelong fascination with intelligence and gaming and studies at Cambridge led him down the path of reinforcement learning. He would eventually lead the DeepMind team to build AlphaGo. AlphaGo was different to previous AI systems like Deep Blue which was the IBM computer program that defeated the world chess champion, Garry Kasparov. It's different because mastering the game of Go required a great deal of what we humans might consider intuition. Instead of learning through the analysis of millions of past games, as previous mod models have done, AlphaGo was trained using deep reinforcement learning, a more flexible and intuitive structure where the system learns more or less by itself through a trial and error approach, rather than through rigid specified rules and instructions. In 2016, AlphaGo defeated the world chess champion Go player, Lee Sedol. Artificial intelligence researchers has solved the game of Go a decade earlier than expected. The computer named AlphaGo was able to beat the European human champion. Artificial intelligence researchers have made a significant breakthrough. It really is a big leap forward. There's a big difference between the way the uh, IBM computer beat Kasparov, which was programmed by expert chess players, and the way the Go playing computer more or less learned itself. And the way we start off training AlphaGo. Since 2016, DeepMind has continued pushing the boundaries of artificial intelligence and reinforcement learning with the development of AlphaFold Alpha and now MuZero. MuZero was built in a similar way to AlphaGo, but with some additional pizzazz. By predicting the future reward, action, and modeling its environment, MuZero is able to discover the rules of the game on its own without any specific instruction. And DeepMind built MuZero. What we did in MuZero was we asked, what if our agent is approaching some completely new environment, like a game it's never seen before, and it just has to figure out the rules of the game for itself and in doing so understand its its environment in a sufficiently powerful way that it can actually succeed in winning the game or in achieving its rewards in the real world an ai that can pick up the rules of the game for itself could in theory excel at any new gaming scenarios but crucially so while alphago alpha fold and mu zero attracted some mainstream attention, AI still felt like an unimportant, superstitious and distant future fantasy. That was until the launch of GPT-3 a few years ago. As discussed in a previous essay, in 2020, ChatGPT or GPT-3 took the world by storm. Did so not because of the big leap forward in data, processing and compute, though these things were essential. The real surprise factor was that the new models were incredibly and terrifyingly human-like. They could convincingly simulate and engage in human conversation in a way only previously possible with another biological monkey meat sack. So WTF is a large language model. No intentions of explaining the full technical intricacies of large language models in, in this essay. For that, I'd recommend checking out these two resources I referenced earlier. The first is Andre Kapathy's Intro to Large Language Models, and the second is the Three Blue One Browns What is a GBT Visual Intro to Transformers. They're a bit technical, but definitely uh, within grasp for most people. In this essay, I want to offer just enough to make certain, beyond any doubt, that what is currently happening is going to fundamentally change human existence. The technology is new, it's confusing, and perhaps a tad scary. Because of this, most people are unable to grasp the significance of what these current language models represent, or the rate and force with which these changes are coming. Here's an example. In a recent New York Times piece, there's a suggestion that the hype surrounding artificial intelligence is 
overblown. I can't see it here. New York Times account login, which I won't be signing up for. Um, this is a quote from the piece. AI is not even close to living up to its hype. In my eyes, it's looking less like an all-powerful being and more like a bad intern whose work is so unreliable that it's often easier to do the task yourself. In other major news, Scarlett Johansson is apparently suing OpenAI for allegedly using her voice. Both of these examples are so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. So in this essay, we want to cover understanding one, how LLMs came to be, two, how they work, and three, what we don't know about how they work. This is super helpful. Once you have this information, you can make your own opinion about the trajectory of artificial intelligence. So how LLMs came to be, the alien brain continuum. ChatGPT and other new large language models like Claude and Llama are not some standalone out of the box new invention. They're the latest incarnation of an alien brain that we've been developing for the past 70 years along a messy and non-linear continuum. Frank Rosenblatt, a psychologist and computer scientist was tinkering with the alien brain way back in the 50s. He invented a perceptron machine which was capable of recognizing patterns and performing simple tasks such as distinguishing shapes and letters. These early neural networks were simple, inspired by how we thought biological brains worked, particularly how neurons fire and connect. At this point you might be asking what the fuck is a neural net or a neural network. In the earliest incarnation, these neural nets were both a theoretical concept and an actual physical machine like a bunch of visible electronic cells with knobs and wiring and switches and connections, capable of dealing with complex algorithm and simple A and B questions. The key consideration here is that even the most simple neural nets, like Rosenblatt's perceptron machine, were early incarnations of this alien brain. So rather than take specific instructions, like say a calculator, these early neural nets and the connections learned and adjusted themselves through example. As things progressed, these neural nets became more complex. There were multiple layers, feed forward networks and back propagation. And in simple terms, these new improvements and concepts helped information flow through the network more efficiently. These were the foundations of deep learning. There were more unlocks in the form of recurrent neural networks, RNNs, and autoencoders, which made it possible to process sequential information and maintain context over time. So by the time David Silver and DeepMind picked up the baton, deep neural networks and reinforcement learning had been through half a century of innovation. So combining the existing technologies and innovations, they created the first alien brain that was capable of defeating humans in a previously unthinkable demonstration of creativity and intelligence. The next major step forward was the inception of transformers, which brings us to the language models that we have today. While AlphaGo was specifically created to play the board game Go through reinforcement learning and self-play, large language models were created to understand and generate human language. This is NLP or natural language processing. The 2017 Attention is All You Need paper introduced the idea that you could design a neural net using self-attention to process and produce significant amounts of text input and output more efficiently. This is the paper here. OpenAI had the conviction to back the transformer idea. In hindsight, it now seems obvious, but taking that gamble was a big one, and who knows where we'd be had the OpenAI team not made that bet. So we're going to pause on that confidence because I want to explore that. But let me zoom back out and ask um, back to the history of ImageNet. Neural networks have been around for many decades, as you mentioned. What do you think were the key ideas that led to their success, that ImageNet moment and beyond the, the success in the past 10 years? Okay, so the question is to make sure I didn't miss anything. The key ideas that led to the success of deep learning over the past 10 years. Exactly. Even though the fundamental thing behind deep learning has been around for much longer. So the key idea about deep learning, or rather the, the key fact about deep learning before deep learning started to be successful, is that it was underestimated. People who worked in machine learning simply didn't think that new neural networks could do much. People didn't believe that large neural networks could be trained. People thought that 
well, there was lots of there was a lot of debate going on in machine learning about what are the right methods and so on. And people were arguing because there were no there, there were there were no there was no way to get hard facts. And by that I mean So OpenAI with their ChatGPT had now given the alien brain the ability to efficiently create and understand human language. How LLMs actually work. Rosenblatt's Perceptron machine and Silver's AlphaGo were powered by brain-like neural networks with many adjustable parameters, allowing them to learn and alter their behavior. LLMs like ChatGPT are also powered by advanced neural network architectures with billions of parameters. But there are some key differences in the design. LLMs like ChatGPT are pre-trained on vast amounts of text data. Imagine reading every book, every article, and every website on the internet. It's essentially what the models do. In phase one, they ingest huge amounts of internet data. Thousands of powerful computers then process the data and compress information into parameters. And in the second phase, the model is trained on smaller but higher quality data to refine behavior. The enormous volume of data and the refinement process allows the model to understand patterns, context, and nuances of human language. Okay, let's now switch gears to how does this network work? How does it actually perform this next word prediction task? What goes on inside it? Well, this is where things complicate a little bit. This is kind of like the schematic diagram of the neural network. Um, if we kind of like zoom in into the toy diagram of this neural net, this is what we call the transformer neural network architecture. And this is kind of like a diagram of it. Now, what's remarkable about these neural nets is we actually understand uh, in full detail the architecture. We know exactly what mathematical operations happen at all the different stages of it. Uh, the problem is that these 100 billion parameters are dispersed throughout the entire neural network. And so basically, these billion parameters uh, of billions of parameters are throughout the neural net. And all we know is how to adjust these parameters iteratively to make the network as a whole better at the next word prediction task. So we know how to optimize these parameters. We know how to adjust them over time to get a better next word prediction. But we don't actually really know what these 100 billion parameters are doing. We can measure that it's getting better at the next word prediction. But we... so Andre, Andre Kapathy was one of the founders at OpenAI. He's also the head of AI at, um, at Tesla. And so it's really just incredible that he's made these videos that go under the hood of how the LLMs work. It's definitely worth watching some of his stuff. That video in particular is less technical, which is, which is really good. Someone like me anyway. The transformer design helps the alien brain process information more efficiently, progressively improving the mapping of context and meaning between words. When words and sentences are fed into the alien brain, they're broken into tokens. Tokens are words, numbers, symbols, anything like that. And they're mapped against the existing library of knowledge. Each token is associated with an adjustable vector. This is the tricky part. You can think of it kind of like coordinates in some very high dimensional space. Humans operate in limited three dimensional space. So it is hard to conceptualize this. The models basically predict the next word in the sentence by applying a mathematical probability to every possible next word. It follows. So let's take a moment to get familiar with it. We often call this embedding a word which invites you to think of these vectors very geometrically, as points in some high-dimensional space. Visualizing a list of three numbers as coordinates for points in 3D space would be no problem, but word embeddings tend to be much, much higher dimensional. In GPT-3, they have 12,288 dimensions, and as you'll see, it matters to work in a space that has a lot of distinct directions. In the same way that you could take a two-dimensional slice through a 3D space and project all the points onto that slice, for the sake of animating word embeddings that a simple model is giving me, I'm going to do an analogous thing by choosing a three-dimensional slice through this very high-dimensional space and projecting the word vectors down onto that and displaying the results. The big idea here is that as a model tweaks and tunes its weights to determine how exactly words... So while producing the next word in a sentence seems simple enough, it's important to remember that the next word prediction is actually the product of trillions of reference points. The big surprise is that by arriving at the next word, the models have clearly understood context and meaning. Some people think that this understanding is just an impressive mirage produced through vast exposure to huge amounts of text and relevant references. 
Others believe that understanding develops naturally as the model synthesizes information and forms its own understanding of humanness. You can read more about that in the previous essay, which I did on the emergence debate. I actually think it's less important than the fact that we're having the conversation at all. Almost nobody predicted that this would be possible for a computer or an artificial intelligence to understand and produce human-like or human-level language. So what we don't know, which is about the black box and interpretability. If we think back to AlphaGo, David Silver and the DeepMind team realized that learning to play Go would require more than just feeding the alien brain vast replays of Go games. So they applied reinforcement learning, giving the model feedback on whether the moves were correct or incorrect. And this feedback is what allowed the model to adjust its own internal switches, that those are the parameters, gradually improving its ability to make the correct move. So during the match against the world champ, AlphaGo made a dumb move, or at least everybody thought it was a dumb move at the time. That move is now known as move 37. Everyone thought it was a mistake until everybody realized it was a, a mistake. It turned out to be a really unconventional and creative strategy that no human had ever thought to use before. So while the team was able to unpack the move and why it was made, pinpointing how or why the exact interactions between the individual switches, which were the weights or parameters we just talked about earlier, trying to work out why they were changed is virtually impossible because of the ginormous number of connections involved. So AlphaGo had millions of parameters. Our human brains have approximately 86 billion neurons or connections. And the most recent versions of ChatGPT are rumored to have nearly 2 trillion parameters. That's a rumor. I don't know how, how true that is. Um, so don't quote me on that one. But to put this into perspective, a library with a trillion books would circle the Earth's circumference 100 times. It would take you 30,000 years to read. That's with no food, no toilet breaks. So the sheer size of these models is really hard to comprehend. It explains why the models are so powerful, why they're able, or at least they appear able to create a model of the world and understand meaning in human language, and also why it's impossible for us to know exactly how the models are predicting the next word in a sequence. In a similar way, we really don't know how the neurons in our brains fire, communicate, or give rise to the complex behaviors. On Wednesday past, and maybe the Wednesday before, when you read this, Anthropic dropped their most recent work on mapping the mind of a large language model. This is the paper here. Anthropic are also the creators of Claude, which is another LLM. This research involved mapping the patterns of millions of human-like concepts in the neural networks of Claude 3, which is their recent LLM model. It's a model similar to recent releases of GPT. They were actually able to define repeatable patterns or in brain speak, similar neurons firing when discussing related concepts. One of the examples they gave in the paper was when they were looking near a feature related to the concept of inner conflict, they found features related to relationship breakups, conflicting allegiances, logical inconsistencies, as well as the phrase catch 22. The reality here is still uh, that this is by far the best work we have in terms of understanding the inner works of AI models, and it really doesn't give us all that much in terms of understanding how they work. So at this point, we need to accept the possibility that the intelligence exhibited by these models exhibited sorry by these models won't be reducible to explainable parts, similar to the way humans and other biological systems work. I wrote another piece a few weeks ago discussing the idea that we'll soon be forced to expand our understanding of intelligence, which is based on the work of Michael Levin. Uh, final note, if the technical stuff hurts your brain, the TLDR here is artificial intelligence is certainly not a passing fad. The rate of improvements is exponential, and that this is an alien brain intelligence, which at this point is impossible for us to fully unpack. The change this is going to bring is unimaginable.